It's Trading Tip Tuesday. I wanted to talk about Fibonacci retracements today, Fibonacci levels, something I use and take for granted all the time. And ultimately, Fibonacci retracement levels are essentially just support resistance that price typically has some sort of reaction to. I'll get into specifics. This is an article on Investopedia if you want to read up more about the exact specifications or the story behind it. You know, To me, that's less important versus the practicality. I don't care if it's superstitious voodoo. If I can backtest it and it works, I'm going to use it, right? So I don't have to believe in this deeply. I don't have to believe in Fibonacci, anything, magic number, yada, yada, yada. Like, I, I don't care, right? Because <laughs> if it works, I'll use it. So let's talk about um, some examples, just example after example after example. We can backtest this. We can forward test this. We can look at all sorts of stuff in all sorts of ways. So the first thing I'll say about fibs is that I mainly use them for chart patterns or periods of consolidation. You can think of most periods of consolidation effectively as some sort of chart pattern, usually fits into some pigeonholed box. Um, here's the ETH BTC chart on the weekly, okay? So we've got a very clear horizontal level, and you might even think, okay, this isn't so clear here, but it's obvious here, it's obvious here when we get a breakout. So there's, there's some reading into this in that you have to be comfortable with knowing Where's the high? Where's the low, right? Let's just say, okay, we know where the high and the low is. It's more clear, right? We pick two, two wicks, two extreme extremes. It's obvious where the high and the low is here. There's a little subjectivity to it, but at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter too much. Some people will disagree with me vehemently on that. I am in the camp of just pick a high and a low, right? I don't need the exact wick every time. I just need a level that makes sense. To me, this level makes sense. To me, this horizontal level level makes sense even though there were violations of that level several times whatever so we have this range right we can say okay does this look like anything kind of it kind of looks like an inverted head and shoulders right we get a series of low lower low higher low that matches the previous higher low we could say okay that maybe represents a head and shoulders right that's less relevant for this specific video but there's typically a chart pattern associated with that so we have our high we have our low and you turn on your Fibonacci tool on uh, TradingView or CryptoWatch or wherever, and you drag it from the high to the low, and you'll get a series of numbers. And the numbers that I like paying attention to the most are the 1618 Fibonacci extension and the measured move, which is effectively two in this case. Um, 0.5 is not a fib. 0.5 or whole numbers, integers are not fibs. They are part of the indicator, right? So you can choose to pay attention to those or not, but typically when you pick a high and a low, you'll find a respect of, in a support and resist sense, of the 50% retracement. So it's no coincidence that 50% of this level is where these lows start to bounce. You know, you, you didn't know that here, but you do know that here, right? Between the 620 and the 50, uh, 50%. So the most aggressive traders would have bids in this zone preemptively let's say you get this high you get this low and price is rising they will have bids here they'll be ready to to make action here at these highs because there's always an assumption of a 50 percent pullback which isn't a fib but it's on the indicator um, really the big part of the, where the fibs come in is when you have your consolidation and you finally get your move when you have your expected move right where does price go where do i think price is going to go. Where can I set my bids and asks or whatever to trade this effectively? Where can I put my limit orders? So almost always invariably, we get a move to the 1618 Fibonacci extension beyond the high, as well as somewhere in the range of the measured move, which is two in this case. So between 1618 and two. So if we have a consolidation, we have a high and a low, we have a breakout, there is an extremely high likelihood we will get some sort of move within this range which is why for a lot of the times you see people comfortable calling certain levels post breakout, right? So you'll see people talking about 055 for ETH BTC and you can sort of look back at the chart and say, oh, was that an important level anywhere else? Sure, you know, high, mess, low, high, low. Uh, so the, it's a psychological level 05, just round number again. So the subjectivity is picking the high and the low but the objectivity is expecting a move to the 1618 minimum and a measured move 
to the two level. Now, anything after that, which happens all the time in crypto, if this is an extended trend, if this is a multi-month trend, multi-year trend, I'll show these in a few seconds, but you'll you'll see moves to the 2618, the 3618, the 4618, the 5618. But typically you will see some sort of acknowledgement of price at those levels. It sounds crazy, but hey, it is what it is. So as a trader, you can have your core position, you know, this consolidated for two, three years, right? You're, you accumulate your core position pre-breakout or, or at the breakout. And these are your levels on the way up that you're selling. So maybe you're selling 50% of your position between the 1618 and the two measured move. And then you're just holding the rest. You're selling 10% of the 2618, 10% of the 3618. Maybe you're using some sort of trailing stop loss system. This is just one example of how to use the, the fibs to your advantage. Because a lot of times people see this, they don't know where to put their orders. They're they're panicking, right? They, they don't know what they don't know what to do. This gives you a an objective way of setting limit orders, setting bids, asks, whatever. Let's look at BNB BTC, Binance Coin BTC. Here's a great example. We had this huge move, right? Once you know the move is in, once you know you have a high, once you know you have a low, maybe a few days into this. So this is the three day chart. Maybe you wait nine days till you're convinced there's some sort of bottom, some sort of reversal. And you say, okay, let's, let's fib this out. What is realistically the target here based on mean reversion, which is where the 50% comes in. The principles of mean reversion suggest that we almost always get a move back to 50% of the entirety of the previous move. So when price was down here, you know, you'd be looking at prices up here and you can say, all right, you're just looking at this and cherry picking some sort of move. You know, that's fine, whatever. But this is the stuff I use to trade every day. So you get a big move here and reversal gets in. Here's your mean reversion target. We're currently sort of respecting those levels. If we look at another type of consolidation, this was a ended up being a diamond top pattern. And you're looking for, again, those highs and lows. It's no shocking secret that this, once this high was in from this low, extreme high, extreme low, that it tapped uh, the 50% of that and bounced up. If we look at this from another perspective, saying, okay, this is a consolidation pattern. What do we do here? We pick this high, this low, and we get projected fibs down for the move. Uh, some people use the 1.272. I don't really use that ever. Um, and a lot of times, because this is log scale, you get this massive zone of expectation for for the move, right? And realistically, even though this did hit the zone a year later, you know, it's not you're not going to hold this short that long, realistically, most likely. So obviously, none of this stuff is perfect when you're, especially to the downside, when you're trying to get this measured move, 1618 stuff. So I'd keep that in mind. It makes a lot more sense on log scale to the upside than to the downside. Here's ETH USD on the weekly. Okay, let's say we had this multi-year consolidation, this range, and it just so happens it might have been an Adam and Eve, okay, which is just a V and a U. So here's our high, and we know it's our high because of this this point here. So even though if you're looking at this uh, early 2020, right, you're saying there's some sort of level here, some sort of level here, some sort of level here, you can fudge that zone, whatever. The, the low is pretty obvious, right? It basically retouches that low or comes very close to it. So you have your high, you have your low, and then we get fibs to the upside. Here's our 1618 to 2 zone, and it was definitely the initial impulse respected that level extremely well. And right now we're on the 7618 of this massive move. And you can keep adding 8618, 9618, blah, 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 blah. But you can treat these as support and resistances on the way up, places to buy or sell, places to set bids or asks again. Uh, I'm just going to hit this chart pattern stuff home because it's so helpful. Here's ETHUSD in 2017, ascending triangle, high. Now you can pick a low as far as the wick here, or you can pick a low as far as when did the pattern start to form? That's up to you, how conservative you want to be. And this was the initial impulse expectation. Obviously it overshot that by a lot, which is another reason why you don't always want to sell everything at the expected move especially the initial move. I'm going to leave some on the table. You want to let the runners run, right? Where do I want to let the runners run to? You know, that's that's the question that we're finding a lot in, uh, in ETH and BTC, right? We're in price discovery. There's no left side of the chart to compare. We can use stuff like this, just like we were in price discovery in 2017, to say, okay, here's some sort of pattern. Here's some sort of 
possible support resist targets on the way up, right? And you can say, you can make a system for yourself. Maybe if we tap a fib extension twice, I decide to get rid of everything on the way up. You know, you can set rules for this completely dependent on, on your own trading system. Here's Aave BTC, just picking some random high and low, right? Extreme high, extreme low, 1618 to 2 fib, uh, currently where it's pulling down from. It also respected the 1.272. So again, just depending on your trading rules, what you want to do as far as buying and selling, setting bids and asks, maybe you're rebuy rebuying the previous all-time high, maybe you're stopping yourself out when we break down below the 1618, you know, all sorts of things like that. Here's another ascending triangle, BTC USD. Another great example, multi-month ascending triangle. Where did the initial move move? Where was the initial impulse, right? At the time, when we were at sub 4K, so many people were ultra, ultra bearish, right? And that's that's what you see. That's always what you see. People get bearish on the way down. People get bullish on the way up. The targets expand, right? As we're, as we're dying off, you know, we're getting... Three-digit targets, two-digit targets, that's just natural. That's what happens with people. So to be able to have some perspective as far as expectations, if this is a bullish consolidation, if this has a bullish bias, if we expect this to move up, where do we expect it to, to move to, right? So this is where FIBS, you just lean on FIBS so hard here because this isn't a trend. This is a massive reversal. And you're kind of flying in the face of a lot of people's realities thinking that this is going lower. So it doesn't always happen in one candle. You know, this is ideal. Certainly didn't happen with the ETH USD move into price discovery. But this is such a great example of these fibs. So, okay, you know, unlike me who let it all go in this zone, not following my own possible rules, you can let the runners run, right? You're not, the expectation shouldn't be we're going to the 7618 every single breakout. But if you're letting the runners run, then you're just buying or selling on every rung of this ladder. And you can always refib this out at the consolidation points. And those will give you additional uh, targets as well. Here's the ETH ascending triangle on the four hour. And it's been kind of sad because it's it consolidated for a month, broke out. This is the 1618 and the two, as far as the the zone of expectation. You know, as, a, as this is happening, I'm expecting this to reach for this zone. It took some time, but it got there. Uh, it's currently, you know, within that level. This is an all time high, right? So it kind of doesn't matter where we are on the price chart. If we're at lows, if we're at highs, if we're at all-time highs, right? It, the rules are all the same as far as the fibs are concerned. So on the way up, I'm looking at 2300, 2800 as far as the, the 2618, the 3618. So if I'm in position as this is consolidating or as this is breaking out, I'm selling a majority of my position or half of my position here and then just selling more on the way up, right? And using some sort of trailing stop-loss system to accompany that trade. There's another ascending triangle on ETH. 2018 to 2019, just hitting this home, just hammering it in my own head as well as yours. Here's the 1618 to 2. So this impulse sort of exceeded that, pulled back a bit, reached for the 3618. And this is where things like divergence has come in. If we're just pushing, pushing, pushing these, these fibs and we get this massive divergence, which is another part of the training system I use, bearish divergence that says momentum is just weak, right? If we're pushing into like the 7618, the 8618, and we just get this massive multi-day, multi-week bearish divergence, I'm just so less confident that we're going to keep going, right? There's usually some sort of pullback or acknowledgement, or really the reality is people are just up by several multiples at that point. Uh, funding gets high, stuff like that. And longs start to close, more longs start to close, late longers get trapped, they start to close, and then this thing kind of collapses on itself. Here's another famous ascending triangle. This was the consolidation period for BTC between 2015 and mid 2016. Broke out, had a few impulses, but did reach the uh, 1618 to 2 and then reached for the 3618, pulled back. So, again, if you're selling 50% or more of your position here and then you're letting runners run, depending how you want to treat that uh, on the additional fibs. So let's say you sold 50% here, sold 10% here. Uh, we retraced to this level and maybe that was your trailing stop. And you're just out of your entire position at that point. And that would be a long from 460. And you're just selling up here. We can always zoom, zoom, uh, zoom, 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 way, way out. <laughs> um, here's another uh, mega consolidation period. So this was BTC. And if we pick this high, so let's say we look at this from uh, July to November, right? 
we pick this high, we pick this low, we say this is some sort of thing. Uh, there was a possibility that this was an inverted head and shoulders. It was just, you know, it was all over the place, kind of like um, the ETHBTC chart where it looks like it tried to make an inverted head and shoulders or some semblance of an inverted head and shoulders. It's not perfect, it's messy, it's ugly, right? But there was definitely a range, there was a range bound consolidation. So high, low, and let's just add all the fibs, right? Let's add all the fibs we can. Here's our 1618 to 2 level here. So there's a decent expectation that we were going to hit that level. And on the way up, you know, if you're still holding from these levels, again, you're just selling every every fib. But currently reaching the 6.618 based on this measured area. And depending on how you want to treat this, you know, you can refib up here and we can look at this high, this low, and what's what's that 1618 to 2 level, which I think for most people is more realistic to refib every consolidation because they're using leverage, they have to pay funding. So this is all super volatile. So right now there's an expectation based on fibs, based on the previous consolidation. So we get a high, we get a low. If we break up or down, then you can project those fibs up or down, right? We broke up. So here's here's the fibs. Between 50k and 55k is the next zone of consolidation or tapping or you know whatever there's going to be some sort of acknowledgement on that level most likely so a lot of people use fibs in a lot of different ways hopefully i helped you learn how to fish as it were you know you're not just looking to somebody every time panicking <laughs> what do i do where are the targets oh my god we're breaking all-time highs you're checking your phone every five seconds right um this way you're stepping back you're saying okay here are some levels objectively based on the highs and the lows we have this system that's weird it's kind of voodoo but it oddly works. Let's start to pay attention to it, right? I encourage you to forward test this in your own trading, not trading advice, but forward test this and see what starts to happen as far as um, prices lining up with this sort of stuff. So let me know what you think about FIBS in the comments below and happy trading.